r slash no sleep posted by reddit user space general america the midnight game part three i didn't panic when my candle went out honestly i was getting used to it and lighting it again wasn't hard the practice i'd been getting since the game started had made it easier one scratch and i had a lit match the rat watched as i lit the candle with patience that was almost human when I finished, its nose twitched, and it resumed scurrying down the hallway, so I followed it without further ado, closing the door behind me as I did it. It was odd, following the rat. There seemed to be some kind of purpose to its movements, like it was following the steps of a plan. Each step they took was done with confidence that I felt ashamed to envy. The green sunlight from outside seemed to have taken on a darker tone, like... It was decaying. When I passed by the window, I glanced outside. The entire world was still gray, barren, and lifeless. There was a buzz on my phone, and I pulled it out of my pocket. It was from Josie. Larry, where the hell are you? I've lost Benny. You were right, something's wrong with Greg. And there's rats everywhere. I've never seen rats this big before. I replied immediately. Look, I think the rats are on our side, okay? So just, I don't know how to say it, but don't be scared of them. A new message. It was from Benny. Josie, Larry, thank God you're okay. Um, look, I'm following one of the rats right now. Do you guys know what time it is? I looked at the top of my phone. It was... What the hell? I can't tell. Josie's text sent a shiver down my spine. It was the exact same way I felt. A scream came down the hallway. I jumped, nearly dropping my candle as I spun around. Another text message. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, I answered. What was it? Don't you mean, who was it? I paused then, realizing I didn't know if this was Josie or Benny I was talking with. My thumb hovered over the buttons, unable to even flinch. Another text appeared. Uh, who is this? That text came from Josie. The next one answered her question. Greg. My tongue became lump in my mouth. My mouth went dry. There was another inhumane scream. Then a thundering of footsteps. Greg's coming, guys. That dick didn't come from either Benny or Josie. A tug on my pant leg made me look down. The rat was staring up at me, agitated, then turned to stare at the end of the hallway. I followed its gaze. From down the end of the hallway came the cracking of glass. A husky voice called my name. The rat immediately took off in the opposite direction. I didn't need any prodding to follow it. When the door opened, seemingly by itself, I ducked into it after the rat. I nearly slammed the door shut but it closed before I could even begin to put my hand on the rusty knob. I knew damn well whoever it was would be able to find me, so I needed to barricade the door shut. Somehow, I began frantically looking around for either a chair or something else to prop up against the door. The rat's chirp caught my attention. It was standing on an operating table. Without hesitation, I began to push it against the door, upending it so its wheels weren't on the ground. As the top shoved against the door, the rat chirped again. It was pushing itself against an old wheelchair, which I immediately pushed up to support the operating table. Then I ducked down, making sure my head was out of sight from the door's single, rectangular window. Footsteps came shuffling down the hallway. I held my breath and clenched my fists around the candle, turning it so that as little light would shine outside the glass as possible. The footsteps were light, even as they came closer to the door. I glanced over at the rat, whose body rose and fell in quick succession. It was watching the door, same as me. The footsteps stopped. A shadow blocked the sunlight from coming in from outside. I could hear breathing. Who was it? Carlton? Greg? The voice that spoke was so hollow, so empty even of cadence, I couldn't tell. Save that it had once been human Larry
Do you want to know where we are? I clamped my lips shut, hand over my mouth and nose. My heart was hammering in my chest. The voice continued speaking. We never left Earth. My heart skipped a beat. We're still on our planet, the voice continued. We're just seeing it as it really is. As it will always be. This is what it looks like beneath our notice. Human eyes have never been able to notice it. They are always so blind to what reality is. Unable to see beyond their own arrogance. This is what it's like to live as a rat. To see the world for what it is. The doorknob rattled and slowly began to turn until it unlatched. The door shook as something banged against it. The makeshift barricade rattled under the blow. Another bang, and another, and another. The barricade shook under the assault, seeming to struggle under strain. Open the door, Larry, the voice said. Let me in. I closed my eyes. The voice kept speaking. Let me in, Larry. Just open the door and let me in. Open the door. Then, in the distance, came a scream. A girl scream. Oh God, couldn't be her. No, not her. And just like that, the door stopped shaking. Footsteps began to shuffle away, but the voice kept speaking. The midnight game will end soon. Very soon. It will all be over. Soon. I waited until the voice had completely vanished before daring to move. The rat scrambled back from out of my grasp and up onto the barricade, looking down at me. It was harder to remove the barricade than it had been to make it. By the time I had opened the door, I couldn't help but notice how the sunlight had changed again. Now, its shade was less sickly, yet still the color of a corpse. I was already beginning to follow the rat when there was a rumble under my feet, like an earthquake, and then a distant echo, like the rattling of chains. What's going on? I mumbled. They stopped, realizing what I'd done. The rat turned around and stared at me with wide black eyes. I'd just broken a rule, hadn't I? I thought I'd hear a voice by my ear saying that I was the third player to lose the midnight game. I'd feel its hands grab onto my shoulders and drag me away into the darkness. I'd end up like Carlton and Greg. Nothing of the sort happened. I pulled out my phone, about to text the others, when someone else beat me to it. Not long now. There was a distant rumble behind me, and my phone's screen suddenly turned to static, a rainbow of colors flashing across the screen. I tried to turn it off, but no matter how hard I held my finger against the off button, it stayed on. I gripped my teeth together and stuffed my phone back in my pocket before looking at the rat. The rat suddenly raised its head high in the air and let out a high-pitched squeak. For a brief moment, everything was still. Then, the walls bulged. Plaster burst open as a swarm of rats fluttered out and crawled onto the floor assembling behind the one I had been trusting as my guide. They all stood to attention, staring at me. Then, the guide squeaked again, and the rats moved. They grabbed onto each other's tails, with their mouths squirming into shapes on the ground. My eyes widened when they stopped. The rats had formed themselves into words. Actual words I could read. The midnight game is ending, they said. Each rat saved the guide, remaining perfectly still, as my eyes darted across them. What lies beneath are almost awake. Only two players remain now. The other team is coming for you, now. The rats let go of their tails and shifted into new letters, making a new sentence. Only one needs to survive to win the midnight game. Try to find somewhere to hide until the game ends. I felt my eyes widened at the rats. I shook my head grimly. The rats shifted again, 
my guide remains still, expression unchanged. Your friends can be regained if you only survive. The King of Terrors does play fair. I blinked, squinting in confusion. Then I heard the fifth voice speak. It came from behind me, far away, but to undeniably close. Ah, there you are. I wonder, have the rats told you my title yet? There was a footstep behind me. I slowly turned around. In the green sunlight, the shadows had again converged together. The shape they made now was nearly identical to the one I'd seen before, but it was taller, thinner, and more regal in how it held itself. The game is ending, the fifth voice said. The shadow at the end of the hallway moved, one foot rising off the ground as it moved forward. The other foot followed. The shadow was walking. I have to step up my game now. Otherwise, I can hardly call myself the king, can I? I turned around. The other rats had vanished. Only my guide remained. He was already darting forward and onto my leg when something had grabbed my shoulder. Admit it. The fifth voice, the king, said, I am impressed by your resilience. For a player your age, you handle yourself admirably. Your self-control is a challenge I've yearned for. Please, when you do end up screaming in fear, know that I shall not take much satisfaction in losing a worthy opponent. I was pulled back suddenly, and everything went black. When I opened my eyes, it was the complete darkness. Then, a pinprick of light appeared, a sickly green, purple, magenta, so many colors, colors I couldn't even begin to name, all swarming around me. My eyes widened. They burned under the glare of the colors. In the vast cascade of colors, a shape took form. An eye. Then something scrambled out of my face, tiny feet gripping into my skin as a hairless tail dangled over my cheek. The fur of a rat pressed against my face, blocking my vision. I could feel its hot breath against my ear, my guide's whiskers twitching in horror. I shared. Something roared, a distant, echoing, unearthly war. So far, it seemed to be coming from the edge of the universe itself. Chains rattled as more roars joined in. Roars I couldn't even begin to describe. I've never heard of something like them. They were almost singing, like there were one massive chorus all joining into one symphony human ears should never hear. I could feel it ring in my ears, and something wet began to drip out of it. My body shook and rattled. A vast wind washed over me, pushing me back, fluctuating from freezing to scalding in the fraction of a second. The rat began to scream. Something grabbed my hand. I landed on my back. The wind was gone. So were the colors. As I blinked, I could see the underside of the rat. It was moving. As I slowly pulled it off my face, I found myself looking up at a ceiling, bathed in the sunlight color of the corpse's skin. A shadow appeared above me. You've survived. The voice of the king murmured. I'm impressed. You are most likely to have that rat with you. But... The midnight game isn't over yet, Larry. We're in the last ten minutes. The king chuckled. <laughs> this is always when it gets the most fun. Something dropped onto my chest. I grabbed it and held it up to my face. It was a plump orange candle. Light it, the king said. And your own... All in the centuries I have lived, I have learned of every little thing which you humans fear, and I am going to come at you 
with every ounce of fear I can muster. So please, light your candles, and don't disappoint me. The king chuckled. I could hear something. No, several people shuffling nearby. <laughs> After all, the king said softly, You are the last player for your team. <laughs>